Sometimes you have a Linux machine which has most of the things you want, but you want to modify the kernel slightly and add something, remove something, or make some slight changes. If you want to do this, it's good to know how to build a new kernel. So let's take a look at that. All right, so this machine uh, has a kernel, everything's working fine, but if I wanted to build a new kernel, the first thing you want to do is build a kernel that's based on what you already have. So I type in a u name, u name minus r, and it'll tell me which kernel I have. So I have the 10, the 3.10 kernel. So what you do is then go to kernel.org, and you look for the branch of the kernel you want. So I'm going to grab the 3.10 branch. It doesn't really matter what the last digits are, just make sure it's 310. You can download the tar XZ file and then you'll have it ready to go. All right, so I have it downloaded. It's in my downloads directory. So if I go to the downloads directory and take a look around, I can see that I have this file, Linux 3.10.105.tar.xz. You can decompress it using the tar command, tar xvf and just Linux that right there and I can extract the file and it will start giving me all the source code. Now in addition to the source code you're also going to need to make sure you have a compiler and the rest of your development tools. Um, I like to use the um, menu config option which requires the ncurses development tools as well. So we're going to go ahead and install those after we decompress the kernel. And decompressing kernel does take a few minutes. The yum install. So let's do a group install. Group install. And let's get our development tools. So that will get us our compiler and a few other things. So you have to do a lot of preparation to get ready to build a kernel. Um, kernels are also kind of fun in that if you make mistakes on building a kernel, then things don't work properly for your system. I mean, you can, you can use your system until you start using the new kernel, and the new kernel can completely break everything. So you have to be aware of that. Um, okay. So now we have our development tools. And I want to install the NCURSES development tools as well. So I take a little moment, come over to. All right, now I have the development tools installed. I'm going to install the NCURSES. And this allows you to move up and down in menus for keyboard based or command line interface based menus. Okay. Now, if I want to, at this point, um, I can start looking at what the kernel would look like. So before I build it, um, I can see my expanded directory. I can go into it. And um, I'm going to copy over the configuration file that was used to build my kernel. If you look over in the boot directory, you can see there are a couple of files at the top config up here. And if you look at my current version, so if I do a, a u name minus r, I can see which version I am using currently. So this right here is the kernel I am using. And this is the configuration file that was used to build the kernel. So if I want to copy that one over and then make modifications to it, that's the easiest. Otherwise, you might end up in situations where you, you don't have something you really need, but it would have been there if you would have copied it over. So I'll copy that over and copy over boot. And I'm going to grab the config five like that. And I'm going to copy it over to my current directory as uh, config. 
So now it's in my directory. I can see this is my directory right here. I can do a make menu config. And this will allow me to go in and see my configuration options. I can change anything I want to change, add things, remove things. Um, so I go down, I can see lots of different options here. If I want to go to network support, I can go down there. I can change anything that has an M is a module. Um, things that are stars are built in. So you can see the wireless support is built in. And maybe my machine doesn't need wireless. So I could hit space right here and turn off the wireless. Actually, let's just uh, let's go back, escape, exit right here, and um, it doesn't look like it'll allow me to turn off the wireless. No. All right, so I could go in and turn some else off um, or on. Anyway, at some point I get done, I can save, and then I can. out and I'm done. All right. Now at this point, um, I am almost ready to build my kernel. But there are a few more things I need to do. So I'm going to install some additional libraries as well. So yum install HMACC ALC um, Zlib Bell for my compression in utils bell and my elf utils lib elf bell for my executable file format and stuff. All right, so I build all or install all these packages, and then I am about ready to build a kernel. You'll notice that when I went into that make menu config, when I left it, it did make a bunch of comments about things that were no longer there. So every time there's a kernel change, some of the options get removed, some of them get added, and going into the make menu config will make it possible for me to make sure I have answers for all of the options of which things I want to install, which ones I don't. Okay. Now I'm ready to build my kernel. So I type in make, and this will start building my kernel. Now, building a kernel on some machines, fast machines, will take you somewhere around 20 minutes. If you're on a slower machine, it could take a number of hours. But we don't want to wait that long, so we're just going to skip ahead until it's done. After a while, you'll have finally completed your build. And it's time to just do a few more make commands to make sure things are working correctly. So you do a make all just to make sure that things are done. Um, and then after you have, you're sure that the kernel is all done and everything's taken care of, you can do a make modules and that will build your kernel modules that you might need in order to have a fully complete, fully installed kernel. Because um, when the kernel boots up, anything that was made, made as a module will need to be loaded um, if it needs to be used. Okay, now let's build the modules. Making modules takes much less time than building the kernel. So instead of being a you know, 20 minute to two, three hour time, this is going to probably take less than five minutes. At this point, the modules have been built and you are ready to install your kernel and modules. So if we want to look and see what we have, um, take a little look around. Um, you can see that there is this file 
VM Linus, which would be your newly created kernel. You could take that, move it over into the boot directory, and install it. So if we take a look over the boot directory, we're not going to install our kernel, but you can see here are some kernels. And if we wanted to add more kernels, we copy the file over there, and then in the etc grub d directory, you can see there is a list of things. And in one of these files, you create a file in here that you could then use to rebuild your grub configuration to have all that information moved over into the grub configuration file. And if you take a look over at the boot directory, again, in the grub2 directory, you can see there's a grub.cfg file, and that's the one you generate. And let's take a look at that file, just so you can see what it looks like. And when your kernel is loaded, you will have an entry that looks kind of like these menu entries here. Nice information, including load up information, your kernel line right here, and if you want RAM disk line down here. But this is how you build your kernel.